We begin tonight with the clock ticking on the Trump organization. The Washington Post reports that prosecutors in New York gave lawyers representing the company a deadline of this afternoon to make final arguments about why it shouldn't face criminal charges over its financial dealings. NBC News reported on Friday that charges could come as soon as this week. We also reported that lawyers for the Trump Organization met with the Manhattan DA on Thursday to try and persuade them not to move forward. But with that new reporting from the Washington Post about the Monday afternoon deadline for final arguments, it seems like they didn't do a whole lot of persuading. People familiar with the probe told the Post the prosecutors are looking at charging both the Trump Organization as a whole, as well as CFO Alan Weisselberg. Last week, people with knowledge of the matter told the New York Times the charges will center around potential tax evasion linked to gifts and perks given out to Weisselberg and other top executives. Those include thousands of dollars in private school tuition payments, car payments, and apartment payments. Now, the question on a lot of people's minds is, what does this all mean for Donald Trump himself? Well, the narrow scope of the probe was apparently to assure an attorney for Trump that the former president will leave this round unscathed. Okay, and Trump's lawyer told Politico today that he was told by the Manhattan DA that prosecutors will not bring charges against Trump when the first indictments come down. He added, it's like the Shakespeare play Much Ado About Nothing. This is so small that I can't believe I'm going to have to try a case like this. Joining me now is former federal prosecutor and NBC News legal analyst Glenn Kirshner. So, Glenn, the latest news in the Washington Post seems to me like today was a significant day and the latest reporting says they did not do enough to convince prosecutors they should not be charged. So what does that mean and what will happen next? So it means we should expect the first indictment to be handed down against the Trump organization. We don't know if it will include charges against individuals who work for the Trump organization. But, you know, I, I found it interesting that Trump's attorney said this is just small potatoes. I can't believe I have to defend a, a, a charge like this. I'm not sure how many RICO or gang or conspiracy cases he has actually litigated in court. But if he has done even a handful, Zerlina, he would know that it's never the first indictment handed down by the grand jury that the big fish has to worry about. It's the final indictment because it is prosecutorial tactics 101 to start by returning an indictment against the, the smaller fish, maybe a modest conspiracy indictment, and using that as leverage to flip people. Prosecutors will then hand down a series of what we call superseding indictments, building until the ultimate final indictment, which is the one that's going to include the biggest fish, assuming the prosecutors have been able to amass enough evidence to indict the biggest fish. So there's a lot of hot air coming out of Donald Trump's attorneys, and I don't even think they believe what it is they're saying. This is all just PR. Yeah, in that brand new interview with Politico and Betsy Woodruff Swan is the reporter on that piece. Um, Trump's lawyer sounds like very confident that Trump himself isn't going to be charged in the first round of indictments. What do you make of that? I wouldn't expect him to be charged in the first indictment. I would expect lesser players and perhaps the Trump organization itself to be charged. Because what I can tell you is the Allen Weisselbergs of the world can stay strong, but once they see their name in lights as a marquee defendant on a criminal indictment handed down by a New York grand jury, that tends to get the attention of a guy like Allen Weisselberg, because then the prospect of prison time becomes very real. So this First indictment, again, we're following a prosecutorial blueprint here. The first indictment will be something that's used to leverage people to try to build toward the ultimate indictment. So I know prosecutors are professionals, but they're also human beings. And I just imagine that Alan Weisselberg's refusal to throw Trump under the bus and cooperate 
you know, the human prosecutors might be a little ticked off about that. Does that impact in any way how severe the charges are if they are, um, if he is indicted on charges uh, in the first round? Does that impact uh, the amount or the severity of the charges, the fact that he is not cooperating to this extent? You know, it, it shouldn't. We try not to get so emotionally invested in our work as prosecutors. I was a prosecutor for 30 years that we let that cloud our judgment. I mean, this is by and large a business proposition. We will step to Weisselberg and say, look, this is the evidence we've amassed against you. Here are the charges that the grand jury ultimately can be asked to return against you. Do you want to cut your losses up? agree to cooperate and get a significant benefit for that cooperation? Or do you want us to indict you? And if you like, we can even try you. We can convict you. And before your sentencing date, we're going to have another meeting. And then we're going to say, now that you are concretely facing X number of years in prison, how is that cooperation looking to you now? Because you still have an opportunity to cooperate. This is prosecutors playing the long game. This really is a marathon, you know, with justice being the goal line. It's not a sprint. It feels like a marathon, Glenn. I mean, there's a lot of this conduct that has been known publicly for several years now. And so for the folks at home who are like, Donald Trump appears to be breaking the law in, in a variety of circumstances, and yet he is at his resort in New Jersey, his golf estate. Uh, you, I call him the retiree in Mar-a-Lago, but now I have to update that since he went to his other resort. Um, so in terms of how this could play out going forward, should Donald Trump, the retiree, be worried about being indicted personally um, and lay out for us the order of events <laughs> that would need to unfold in order for that to become a re reality? You know, I understand that prosecutors are probably reluctant to be the first one out of the chute with an indictment of a former president. That's natural, right? Because that will be a, a, an intensely scrutinized prosecution once it's brought. So, you know, it may be that, um, for example, the, the Fulton County, Georgia District Attorney, uh, Fannie Willis, who is investigating the election crimes that it appears Donald Trump committed when he asked Georgia election officials, I need somebody to find me 11,780 votes so I can wrongfully be declared the winner. There are crimes there. We all know there are crimes that were documented in the Mueller report. There are other potential crimes Donald Trump committed while uh, in office. So I think a lot of prosecutors' offices are involved in investigating Trump criminally. And maybe they're all waiting to see who's going to be the first one out of the shoot. But I do believe if New York indicts the Trump organization, we all know that the Trump organization is sort of wholly owned and run by Donald Trump. It is very nearly an indictment of Trump, the person. I think that may free up other prosecutors' offices to say, OK, it is now time for us to also get in the Donald Trump indictment game. I do think that the floodgates are going to open at some point, but as we were just discussing, look, justice is a marathon, so hydrate, hydrate, hydrate. Hi, I'm Zerlina Maxwell. Thanks for checking out our channel on YouTube. You can see more from Zerlina by clicking any of the videos on this screen and make sure you subscribe below to stay up to date on the day's biggest stories. Thanks for watching.